You know, of course, that diamonds are a girl's best friend. And this is our proof of it. Lights, camera, wealth. From blockbuster hits to small screen sensations, actors reign as entertainment's royalty and have raked in millions for years. Ever wonder how lavish the lives of the world's wealthiest actors are? Well, let's dig into it. And they're almost twice as large as usual. I should have twice as many as usual tomorrow. Number 10, Greta Garbo. Let's take a stroll down memory lane to the glamorous era of silent movies. Here, there's one star that has always shown brighter than the rest, Greta Garbo. Born Greta Lovisa Gustafsson in 1905, this Swedish beauty had a humble beginning, but fate had bigger plans for her. Discovered by the renowned director Eric Petschler in her teens, she quickly rose to stardom. With her captivating performances in iconic films like Grand Hotel and Mata Hari, Garbo became a household name. But it wasn't just her stunning looks that made her a sensation. It was her mysterious charm that had everyone hooked. Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer saw her potential early on and wasted no time in offering her an incredible contract. At just 20 years old, she was already commanding a salary that would make anyone's head spin. That is, $270,000 per movie in 1928. This is what you'd call hitting the jackpot. By the time she bid adieu to Hollywood in 1941, Garbo had amassed a fortune over $3 million. If you haven't done the math already, that equals a whopping $40 million in today's currency. But Garbo wasn't one to flaunt her wealth. Instead, she chose to live a modest life, splitting her time between her properties in New York City, France, and Switzerland. Despite her immense success on screen, though, Garbo's personal life remained a mystery. She never walked down the aisle or experienced the joys of motherhood. Instead, she focused on her investments, which turned out to benefit her a lot. Greta had stocked up on stocks, bonds, and Federal Farm Credit Bank notes. From these, she had earned a cool $10 million worth. And let's not forget her cushy $600,000 nest egg that was lounging in a checking and money market account. Apart from that, Garbo had a knack for collecting art. And boy, did she have an eye for the good stuff. Nestled within her posh New York City apartment was a treasure trove of masterpieces. And when Sotheby's got wind of it, they couldn't resist the chance to cash in. People later found out that Garbo had artworks made by some of the most renowned artists of all time. Picture Russian expressionist Jalensky, Renoir, Pierre Bonnard, George Rualt, and even a signed Christian Berard drawing. The final tally for all these pieces was a jaw-dropping $19 million. But not everything in Garbo's estate was a priceless gem. Despite her legendary status, she didn't keep much in the way of personal mementos or Hollywood memorabilia. A few scraps here and there fetched a modest sum of less than $6,000. Of course, when you sum all these up, you'd realize Greta was quite the successful actor. But even in the line of the most popular actors of all time, there's another name that ranks higher. Number 9. Charlie Chaplin From silent movies to today's TikTok era, this English-born comedian and filmmaker has kept us entertained for decades. With his hilarious antics and unforgettable characters, Chaplin's career has been nothing short of spectacular, and it spans a massive 75 years. That's right, he's been tickling our funny bones since way back when. But let's rewind to the beginning, shall we? It all started when young Charlie snagged himself some theater roles and wowed audiences with his talent. His big break came when he joined a production of Sherlock Holmes and stole the show with his stellar performance. Thanks to a little nudge from his older brother, Sidney, Chaplin landed a gig with Fred Carno's comedy crew. Touring the vaudeville circuit across North America, he quickly became the talk of the town. Soon he began earning rave reviews for his slapstick skills. And then like a shooting star, Chaplin caught the eye of the New York Motion Picture Company. These guys then whisked him away to Keystone Studios in sunny Los Angeles. It was there that he introduced the world to his iconic character, the Tramp. Specifically, in the classic flick, Hit Auto Races at Venice. From pennies to pounds, Charlie's world was about to overflow with cash. Now, Chaplin wasn't just a funny face in the movies he was a part of. He also flexed his directional muscles and had quite the experience calling the shots behind the camera while acting in front of it. With each film, Chaplin's fan grace grew bigger and bigger. And so when it came time to renew his contract, he wasn't afraid to ask for a little extra dough. No one can blame him, though. After all, he's the king of comedy. The actor knew his money's worth, 
So in 1914, when Keystone Studios didn't want to cough up the cash, Charlie simply jumped ship. At this point, s and Film Manufacturing Company from Chicago came in waving a juicy contract around. This included a fat $10,000 signing bonus and a weekly paycheck of $1,250. It's true, Charlie was making waves and no one could stand in his way. But Chaplin wasn't also one to stay put for long. In 1916, he pulled off yet another power move, this time hopping over to the mutual company with a deal that would make anyone's jaw drop. He wanted a mind-blowing $670,000 a year. That's like raking in a cool $19 million in today's dollars. And get this, he was just 26 years old when he signed on the dotted line. How crazy is that? With Mutual, Chaplin skyrocketed to superstardom, churning out one hit after another. From Easy Street to The Cure, The Immigrant, and The Adventurer, he was the talk of the town. Before anyone knew it, he was cementing his statue as a cultural icon of the early 20th century. But Chaplin still wasn't content. As he matured, he turned his attention to more meaningful storytelling. This is the point where he began captivating audiences with masterpieces like A Dog's Life in 1918. On top of that, he made a groundbreaking move into feature-length films, A Kid and A Woman of Paris. This cinematic genius wasn't just making movies, he was making history. You're trying to break up my marriage, you cat. But get this straight, Mary Haynes. You can't stampede me by gossip of the drunken ravings of Buck Winston. You've got to have evidence. Number 8. Joan Crawford Joan Crawford is a name that screams glamour and talent when it comes to Hollywood's walk of fame. This leading lady no doubt lit up the silver screen. She also filled up her bank accounts with her jaw-dropping net worth. Crawford racked up over $2 million over her illustrious career. From silent films to the golden age of Hollywood, she ruled the roost. She starred in over 80 films and raked in the big bucks. But it wasn't just about the Benjamins for Crawford. It was about the spotlight and the stagecraft. She wowed audiences with her exceptional acting chops and left a mark with iconic roles in classics like Mildred Pierce and The Damn Don't Cry. Mildred Pierce was her shining moment, and it earned her the coveted Academy Award for Best Actress in 1946. Just to be clear, that trophy wasn't just a shiny ornament. It was a testament to her incredible skill and dedication. With such stardom and incredible talent, there's no doubt Crawford was bringing in the dough. Starting with a humble $75 per week during the silent film days, she climbed the ladder to stardom. Eventually, she started commanding an impressive $7,000 per week at the peak of her career. That's what you call climbing the ladder of success. Even before winning the Best Actress Award, though, Crawford was making waves as early as 1943, and big companies like Warner Brothers recognized that. They knew a good thing when they saw it, so they wasted no time in offering Crawford a groundbreaking three-film deal worth $500,000. That's right, folks, half a million bucks for three flicks. At the end of the day, Crawford's films weren't just hits, they were smash hits. Audiences couldn't get enough of her captivating performances, and critics raved about her flawless acting chops. In the end, Crawford's legacy is etched in Hollywood history as one of the greatest actresses of all time. Her $2 million net worth isn't just a number, though. It's a testament to her talent, determination, and savvy business skills. Here's where Crawford's story gets even more electrifying. You see, in the tumultuous 1940s, some stars were struggling to stay relevant, but Crawford was still out there making power moves left and right. Despite a dip in her popularity, she didn't let that dim her sparkle. Instead, she rolled up her sleeves and hustled her way into deals with big shots like Warner Brothers. Now, contracts might have come with smaller paychecks, but they opened doors to roles that kept Crawford in the spotlight. By staying flexible and seizing every opportunity that came her way, Crawford was able to stay on her pedestal, and this ensured that her bank account never stayed empty. Speaking of glamorous personas, there's one star who stole many hearts with his dashing smile and flair for romance. By the way, if you're enjoying this video, a subscription would be appreciated. Uh, well, it's my arteries. Right this way, please. Well, should you be giving blood? Oh, well, my blood's 1A. Just my arteries are 4A. Number 7. Cary Grant Grant was born in Horfield, England on January 18, 1904. This is a man who crossed the pond to chase his dreams in Tinseltown with just 40 bucks in his pocket. And boy, did he make those dreams a reality. In no time at all, Grant skyrocketed to stardom, captivating audiences with his suave demeanor and razor-sharp wit. From thrilling Hitchcock films to romantic comedies, he had a knack for stealing hearts and leaving audiences begging for more. Whether he was dodging spies in North by Northwest or charming his way through charade, Grant's legacy is as enduring as it is iconic. But here's the thing. 
Grant wasn't just a silver screen icon, he was a financial heavyweight too. With an estimated net worth of a cool $60 million, he was living the high life in true Hollywood fashion. Sadly, in 1986, this silver fox left the world after a stroke claimed his life at the age of 82. Even in his final bow, Grant's star burned brighter than ever. At the time of his passing, his fortune was still impressive and it totaled $60 million. That's about a massive $130 million in today's dollars. This sensation wasn't just another pretty face. He was a trailblazer who danced to the beat of his own drum. You see, Grant was the OG independent actor. He wanted to break free from the studio system and call the shots like a true boss. Refusing to be tied down by contracts, he took control of his career. Of course, that came with a fierce wheel that sometimes ruffled a few feathers in the industry. But hey, that's showbiz for you. As a free agent, Grant was raking in the big bucks. We're talking a cool $300,000 per movie. And if that wasn't impressive enough, he even scored a sweet deal. He pocketed 10% of the gross profits and retained full ownership of his films for seven years. On top of these achievements, it seems like Grant was also a savvy businessman. He liked dipping his toes into the world of real estate. On top of that, he also loved holding board positions at establishments like the MGM Grand Hotel and Hollywood Park. Just when you thought you had him pegged, Grant threw another curveball. He snagged a seat on the board of Rayette Fabergé in 1968, where he held court for a jaw-dropping 18 years. And if that wasn't enough to keep the tongues wagging, Grant played it coy when it came to his fortune. Despite swimming in cash, he left his will shrouded in mystery. Harry used to claim his estate was worth a mere $10,000, but people later found out the real figure was a huge 60 million bucks. Now when it comes to his fortune, you may think this guy would be swimming in the pool of money, but you'd actually be wrong. Turns out this guy was into living a quiet life. His daughter also once revealed that he was generous, but never felt the need to live like a king. Some folks even whispered that he was a bit tight-fisted and used to obsess over every penny. Safe to say, it's not every day you'll see successful actors reining it in when it comes to their spending. Taxi, miss. Cheapest rates in Glencoe. Well, hello. How are you? Well, I'm fine. How are you? And I might add, who are you? Number 6. Audrey Hepburn when you think about the ultimate Hollywood darling, one of the most prominent names that'll come up is Audrey Hepburn. This is an actress whose star power still shines bright even decades after her passing. Her iconic roles from classics like Breakfast at Tiffany's to the timeless elegance she brought to Roman Holiday, Audrey was indeed the epitome of glam and grace. Born in the midst of World War II, her early years were far from glamorous though. But fate had other plans when the renowned French writer Colette spotted her and pushed her into the limelight. From here on out, it all began with a plum roll and the hit Broadway play Gigi. Before anyone knew it, Audrey was on the fast track to Tinseltown superstardom. Of course, Audrey wasn't just a pretty face with killer acting chops, she had a heart of gold too. As a UNICEF ambassador, she jet set it across the globe and used her fame to advocate for children's rights. That too in some of the world's most impoverished regions. A true saint indeed. Despite her fairy tale facade though, she faced her fair share of struggles, which included heartbreak and divorce. But did she let it dim her sparkle? No chance. Audrey remained the epitome of poise and elegance until her final curtain call in 1993. Even in death, Audrey's legacy continues to rake in the dough. With a net worth of a cool $55 million, her name still sells like hotcakes and is plastered everywhere, from fashion collections to must-have trinkets. If you liked the video so far, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Number 5. Doris Day Doris Day, the epitome of Hollywood's good girl, left us at the impressive age of 97. Her journey into the limelight began in the late 1940s, sharing screens with the likes of Frank Sinatra, Jimmy Stewart, and Rock Hudson. Despite leaving Hollywood in the 60s, the love for her films like Que Sera Sera and her personal life never faded. Day's star began to shine bright when she transitioned from singing with big bands to gracing theaters in 1948. By the mid-50s, she was a prominent figure, rubbing shoulders with Sinatra and collaborating with Alfred Hitchcock, eventually becoming one of Hollywood's biggest stars by the end of the decade. Day's association with Rock Hudson saw her earnings skyrocket, amassing over $20 million by the late 60s. That, too, is a figure without taking into account today's inflation, by the way. Sad to say, though, her fortune took a tragic turn when her husband, Martin Melcher, passed away in 68. 
Hepburn soon found out during this time that her life savings had vanished. In the years that followed, she fought a legal battle against the attorney Melcher had hired, and with sheer will, she managed to recover about $6 million, which is worth about $30 million today. But when life dealt her a rough hand, Day didn't miss a beat. With her son Terry's assistance, who was a successful music producer, she embarked on a journey to stabilize her finances. It definitely couldn't have been possible had Day not put in the effort day and night. She began by working on the Doris Day show through the early 70s just to get ahead of this debt. In the end, the darling of Hollywood left behind a net worth of $200 million when she left the world. But her wealth wasn't just from her on-screen charm. It extended to a glittering array of real estate treasures that added sparkle to her fortune. The late starlet's property portfolio was definitely the talk of Tinseltown. From Malibu to Beverly Hills, all of her estates screamed luxury. You should know, though, that these glamorous residencies weren't just for show. They were savvy investments that added to Day's golden nest egg. Day wasn't content with just a couple of fancy houses. She also dabbed in the hotel business and turned her real estate game up a notch. These hotels weren't just cash cows, though. They were gold mines that would ensure a steady stream of income to pad her already plush bank account. Quite impressive, isn't it? Yet the crown jewel in Day's real estate empire was her majestic seven-acre estate in Carmel, California. Not only was this mansion a sight to behold, it also served a noble cause as an animal rescue haven. Day's passion for animals knew no bounds, and her estate stood as a beacon of hope for animals in need. This aspect of her life made everyone realize she had had a heartwarming touch, and that it would never let the shine of her wealth blind her against doing some good in the world. What is the first thing you notice in a person? Whether the person is male or female. Number 4. Spencer Tracy In the glitzy days of Hollywood's golden age, Spencer Tracy shone bright. He was one of the few actors who brought an incredibly natural performing style to the screen. But his success wasn't just about his acting skills, he also built up quite a fortune. When Tracy passed away, estimates put his wealth at $50 million, adjusted for today's prices. While impressive, it's dwarfed by the fortunes of other stars from his era. For instance, George Randolph Scott boasted a staggering $220 million of net worth. Doris Day and Mary Pickford, two leading ladies from the Golden Age, also made their mark financially, with estimated net worths of $200 million and $130 million respectively. They showcased the industry's financial potential, but that isn't to say that even $50 million is a small feat. So what propelled Tracy to such heights? Well, it was a mix of factors. His extensive acting career, spanning 70 films, allowed him to showcase his talent and versatility, and many of these movies were box office hits which filled Tracy's pockets with cash. Everybody knew Spencer Tracy was the Hollywood heavyweight who could do it all. Whether it was bringing tears in dramatic epics or laughter in lighthearted comedies, he always hit the mark. For his role as Stanley Banks in Father of the Bride, Spencer Tracy snagged his first Oscar nomination, and this happened over a decade back in 1950. In this comedic gem, Tracy's character deals with the chaos of his daughter's impending wedding. Guess what? The daughter's role was played by none other than Elizabeth Taylor. The film raked in a whopping $6 million worldwide and it marked Tracy's biggest financial hit ever. Despite his reservations, Tracy agreed to a sequel at MGM's insistence. This led to the successful release of Father's Little Dividend, just 10 months later in 1951. With the triumph of these two films, Tracy reclaimed his spot as one of America's favorite actors. Tracy also received two coveted Best Actor awards for his standout performances in Captain's Courageous and Boy's Town. These honors not only added to Tracy's prestige, but likely boosted his earning potential. They allowed him to command higher paychecks for future projects. One key factor in Tracy's financial success was his legendary partnership with Katherine Hepburn. Their undeniable chemistry in films like Guess Who's Coming to Dinner definitely captivated audiences, and ultimately also brought in significant box office returns. Working with actors who were pretty well-known and famous at the time was a smart move on Tracy's part. That's because it boosted him in his acting career. It also brought in a chunk of cash that he perhaps wouldn't have gotten on his own. Now, Spencer may be one of the lesser-known actors on this list, but there's one name in Hollywood that will never die. Wherever, anywhere, anything like it. All blue stones. Cozy little job, what? May I just hold it for a minute? Of course. When you think of the iconic blonde in a white dress, what's the one name that pops into your head? That's right, the one and only Marilyn Monroe. More than just a symbol of beauty, she was a dazzling talent. 
She graced theaters with her unforgettable performances in timeless classics like Something Like It Hot and Gentlemen Prefer Blondes. Money flew like confetti in Marilyn's world. The actress left behind a net worth of $800,000 when she passed away, equivalent to approximately $7 million today. But her lavish spending habits quickly shrunk her fortune. Known for splurging on clothing, jewelry, and her home, she also generously showered her family, friends, and employees with gifts. After settling various debts and estate fees, Monroe's net worth plummeted to $370,000. Despite her extravagant lifestyle, though, the actress had made provisions in her will. Even in death, Marilyn's heart shone bright. She allocated $10,000 to her assistant and half-sister, Bernice Miracle, and established a $5,000 education trust fund for Bernice's child. On top of that, Monroe arranged a $100,000 trust fund for her mother, Gladys Pearl Baker. This meant that she'd be provided with $5,000 annually. That's a lot of money being handed out. But to be fair, Marilyn was a sensation that was raking in dough every second of every day. During her illustrious career, Monroe amassed a fortune of nearly $3 million from film earnings. Despite her unrealistic financial spending, Monroe left quite the mark on Hollywood with over 30 acting credits to her name. But Marilyn wasn't just a Hollywood starlet. She was also interested in other venues. In the mid-1950s, she co-founded her own production company, Marilyn Monroe Productions, alongside photographer Milton Green. She even took on the role of executive producer for The Prince and the Showgirl. Monroe's talent and charisma eventually ranked her number six on the list of the 50 greatest female American screen legends. Plus, she was honored on the Smithsonian Institution's prestigious 100 Most Significant Americans of All Time list. But tragedy struck in 1962 when Marilyn passed away at just 36 years old, leaving behind a legacy and mystery. While her death was ruled as a probable suicide, many suspect foul play due to the suspicious circumstances surrounding it. Her prized possessions went to her beloved acting coach, Lee Strasberg, who also received 75% of her intellectual property rights. The remaining 25% was entrusted to her therapist, Dr. Marianne Chris. There are just some people out there who love giving, and while Monroe certainly was one of them, let's not forget about another beauty in Hollywood's golden age. Number 2. Elizabeth Taylor Known for her beautiful violet eyes and the graceful charm she brought to the screen, Elizabeth Taylor was the bewitching beauty no one could get enough of. She was famous for her iconic roles in timeless classics like Cat on a Hot Tin Roof and Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf? Taylor wasn't just a silver screen siren though, she was also a savvy entrepreneur. Blazing trails in the world of fragrance and fashion, the actress was also crafting her own brand empire. When she eventually passed away in 2011, Taylor left behind not just a legacy of cinematic brilliance, but a staggering fortune estimated between $600 million to $1 billion. Judging by the success of her business ventures and film life, you'd think Elizabeth would have lived quite the happy life. But her final days were shrouded in drama. This is because she battled heart issues and found herself in the halls of Cedar sinai Medical Center. It was there, on March 23rd, that the curtain closed on her illustrious life, succumbing to congestive heart failure. But she wasn't alone. The actress was surrounded by her four children and a brood of grandchildren and great-grandchildren. Yet even in death, questions loomed over her empire. With such a sprawling family, many people were asking one question. How would her colossal estate and philanthropic ventures be divided amongst them? Can you imagine? A champion of charitable causes, Taylor had raised over $270 million through her own foundation. Not only that, but Taylor's acting career had reaped some incredible sums for her. According to the big shots at Forbes, Taylor scored a record-breaking payday of $1 million for her role in Cleopatra. Yep, you heard it right. That flick where she met her on-again, off-again beau, Richard Burton. Taylor had nerves of steel when she marched into those studio offices, demanding top dollar and a laundry list of perks. But guess what? 20th Century Fox caved in. The buzz around her name was so hot that the studio nearly went bust trying to keep up with her demands. It doesn't stop there, though. Taylor wasn't just a silver screen goddess. She had a nose for smart investments, too. She snagged herself a piece of prime beachfront real estate in downtown Puerto Vallarta, Mexico, back when it was just a plot of sand. Fast forward, and bam! The value skyrocketed into the millions, all thanks to Liz's golden touch. On top of this, it looks like Taylor also liked to dabble a bit in having the monster killer art collection. Picasso, Van Gogh, Monet, she had them all. With so many riches behind closed doors, Taylor wasn't just interested in spending all of them on her own. She was planning ahead for her family, too. 
She set up a trust that allowed her to pass on her riches without flashing her cash in public. No messy court battles or nosy paparazzi sniffing around her business. Now, about who gets what from her treasure trove? Well, that's the million-dollar question, isn't it? Years later after her passing, the actor's husband, Larry Fortensky, couldn't keep the secret any longer and spilled the beans to the Daily Mail. He revealed that Liz left him a jaw-dropping 500 pounds, which is roughly $850,000. That's what you'd call a generous parting gift. And let's not forget about Liz's big heart. Alongside her glittering career, she was a champion for charitable causes, including the esteemed Elizabeth Taylor AIDS Foundation. In the end, Taylor knew she had to use the big buck she was getting from her career to help her family out, and many of the organizations she was a part of are still doing incredible work today. When it comes to doing charity work, though, there's one actress who'd give Taylor a run for her money. I suppose you'd still be attractive to any man of spirit, though. There's something engaging about it, this goddess business. Number 1. Catherine Hepburn Lastly is one of the silver screen's most illustrious leading ladies, Catherine Hepburn. Hepburn didn't just leave behind a legacy of mesmerizing performances, she left behind a fortune fit for a queen. With a net worth of $30 million at the time of her passing, Hepburn proved that true greatness knows no bounds. But this icon wasn't your typical Tinseltown starlet. She wasn't into the glitz and glamour of Hollywood. Instead, she would spend her days in the serene waterfront Connecticut estate alongside her beloved siblings. It's no surprise that the actress was able to gain so much wealth during her time. She had an impressive array of hit movies under her belt. These included multiple Oscars and Emmys for her unforgettable performances in classics, such as On Golden Pond, The Lion in Winter, and Guess Who's Coming to Dinner. Hepburn was a force to be reckoned with both on the big screen and the small screen. Fun fact though, her journey to stardom wasn't without its bumps in the road. After leaving university to pursue her passion for acting, she faced her fair share of setbacks, but her breakthrough Broadway performance in The Warrior's Husband caught the eye of Hollywood's elite and did wonders in catapulting her into the spotlight. After Catherine reached a pretty glittering point in her career, she remained quite humble. Instead of burning through her dough, she dedicated much of her wealth to worthy social and charitable causes. Following her departure from this world, Hepburn's lawyer revealed that her estate was valued at a whopping $20 million. The crown jewel was her picturesque 7.17-acre waterfront property in Connecticut. But here's the thing. This estate held more than just monetary value. It held a piece of Hepburn's family history. It was originally owned by her parents and built anew after a devastating hurricane in 1938. Throughout the years, Hepburn poured her heart and soul into this retreat. She spent many summers basking in its beauty and eventually retired there full-time in her later years. But even in death, the estate continued to spring surprises. A chunk of land, totaling 1.5 acres, was sold for a staggering $11.5 million. If you're wondering what Catherine had intended for her wealth after her death, you'd be pleasantly surprised. In true Hepburn fashion, she had a plan. In her will, signed in 1992, she left behind a trail of generosity, bequeathing sums of money to her employees. The helping hand didn't just stop there, it also included her cherished family members and selected charities. Her housekeeper, accountant, and literary agent each received their own share of Hepburn's fortune. Journalist Cynthia McFadden was not only given a sum of money, but also inherited precious art from the Hollywood icon. Hepburn's generosity didn't just stop there. She made sure to support causes close to her heart. These included the Actors Fund of America and the Motion Picture and Television Fund. And as for her homes, Hepburn's directive was clear. Sell them and distribute the profits to her nearest and dearest. In a final act of defiance against tradition, she specified that she did not want a funeral. She apparently preferred to leave this world quietly, just as she lived her extraordinary life. That's all for now. If you liked our video, your subscription will help a lot. We'll see you in the next one.